Kia ora. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Shand. I am joining this virtual ICCE from Auckland, New Zealand. And on behalf of my co-authors, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to hear our presentation on assessing the effect of earthquake-induced uplift and coastal engineering works on a surf break of national significance. So the background to this, um, this work is that in November 2016, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake occurred along North Canterbury in the South Island of New Zealand. Um, this earthquake caused massive landslides to come down over the, main, the state highway and main north rail line. Um, it caused displacement of the rail line and um, inundation of the road in several places. It also caused uplift of the seabed and foreshore by up to three metres in locations. A recovery project was initialised to reopen the road and rail. Um, it was led by the New Zealand Transport Agency and Kiwi Rail within a, an alliance called NECTA, including a consortium of contractors and consultants. As part of the recovery works, a shared pathway and amenity areas were also proposed to run along the seaward side of the, the newly opened road. So this ran along the, uh, the works to the, to the north as it ran south to get people to the exit point where they could get back over the rail and onto the road. Um, the shared pathway had to run along um, the back of the beach at Mangamanu and around a point. In two locations, the space between the road and rail corridor and the foreshore was insufficient to fit the pathway um, and it would have to be extended onto the foreshore and armoured to provide protection. A preliminary effects assessment noted a high risk of adverse effect at the Mangamanu surf break. In 20, 2018, consents were granted uh, subject to a baseline and effects assessment being undertaken. Mangamanu surf break is a right-hand point break. It's formed by cobbles from the Harpabu River to the south, being transported north, and it's comprised of an outer section and then a higher quality inside section that runs down the point. It's defined as a surf break of national significance within the New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement and therefore afforded special protection rights. The lower photo is of the high quality inside section. Um, Multi-beam bathymetry was collected um, and we can see an offshore spit extending offshore and north of the surf break, which causes refraction and focusing of those waves as they come in onto that higher quality inside section of the surf break. The inner section forms high quality surfing waves, particularly at high tide when those waves can get right and onto the shelf. So as we talked about, we had uplift of up to three metres along the coast, and Mangamanu itself, um, the uplift was around 0.8 metres. And what that means is that high tide now appears like mid tide did previously, and the low tide um, that we're seeing was unseen in, pre in, in previous um, times. There's a, the reported effect on the surf breaks be mixed. There's a larger section between the outer and inner section, meaning rides are more likely to be truncated. Um, between more breaking is occurring on the offshore reef, limiting the height getting into the near shore, and the higher quality inside section has been adversely affected by that. The proposed works at Mangamanu um, that were required to link the shared path coming from the north with the car park and rail crossing to the south had to come around the point. There were two locations where the space between the rail corridor and foreshore were insufficient and it would require extension onto the upper beach and some form of armouring. So three options were proposed, a full revetment fronting a shared path, a reduced revetment and a piled raised path, or a fully piled raised path along the back shore uh, above the beach. The reaction to the proposal from the local community um, was negative, or well, certain parts of the local community was, was negative. There was a lot of concern about the potential impacts of the works on the surf break at Mangamanu, which has high usage from the local community, but it also brings a lot of tourists into town. So a framework was developed to test the potential effects of the works. Um, this is discussed in a uh, previous paper, but it's really around defining what the physical elements are that um, define the use and enjoyment of the surf break um, based on local knowledge, data collection and modeling, looking at the proposed works and what potential effects they might have and then developing a methodology to test the effect um, and the risk posed by that effect. So some of the physical elements identified that define the, the use and enjoyment of the surf break, including the incoming swell energy and the waveform, 
the breaking point and type, the smoothness of the face and ride line, um, any nearshore currents, access um, onto the foreshore, along the foreshore and into the surf, uh, the water quality and the wairua or the landscape and cultural values. The main areas of concern was that, were that the works would cause increased reflection, affecting the smoothness of the face, potentially the ride line and length, potentially modifying currents and even the seabed, um, and that they produce, provide a barrier to access along the foreshore. So as part of this effects assessment, we started with a discussion with the local community to understand the wave breaking, um, to understand what the surfable and the optimal conditions have been, the entry and exit points, and what the effects of the earthquake have been on the break. Uh, the local community tend to have a very good observational knowledge of the area. This was followed by physical modelling undertaken at Manly Hydraulics to refine the coastal protection design. Can we reduce the footprint? Can we decrease the elevation of it? Um, we tested reflection under the existing conditions, which are a na natural cobble and gravel beach, so already quite steep and reflective in the upper parts. Looking at the reflection under the proposed works with that revetment at the back of the beach, um, and any changes in the beach and seabed morphology fronting the structure. So we found negligible changes in reflection, typically less than 1% compared to the existing situation, um, and no change in or scour fronting the seabed. Uh, this was followed by numerical modelling undertaken by Mid Ocean Solutions, first a hindcast and an assessment of the surfable, the occurrence of surfable conditions, and also what the conditions were during reported optimal conditions. Uh, wave resolving modeling, wave resolving modeling was undertaken using SWASH, a wave flow model. Um, this model allows us to look at the refraction around those offshore bathymetry, the shoaling as we approach the break point, the breaking position, dissipation, any new reflection off the back shore, also wave induced currents induced by the breaking. So we could look at existing conditions. We could also look at the effects of the earthquake. So the top figure on the right is um, break, the breaking footprint occurring at mid-tide before the earthquake. The bottom figure is breaking occurring at mid-tide under existing conditions. And we can see that the break points have moved offshore as that seabed has been lifted. And we can also look at the effects of proposed works. Um, on the left-hand side, we see the existing conditions. The middle plot shows um, the two structures in place and the right-hand plot shows the difference between those two. So it's really showing that extra, ref in the increased reflection um, of the southern revetment um, and less effect by the northern revetment. The break at the black lines are showing the break points and that's really important because it lets us look at where the reflection's occurring and which parts of the break that has um, the potential to affect. So when it comes to defining the effects on the physical elements, we've got those physical elements down the left. We undertake a risk assessment using a standard um, likelihood times consequence, giving a level of effect approach. A similar approach is also advocated within the New Zealand um, Management Guidelines for Surfing Resources by Atkin et al. And we found that there was likely an effect on, the, on wave reflection affecting the outer section of the surf break and also on access along the foreshore. The consequence of this was determined as low to medium, primarily because of the lower quality of that outer break. There was low likelihood of effect on the inner section of the surf break. We determined that the level of effect and the risk mitigation should be developed in consultation with stakeholders, but based on the initial results, the New Zealand Transport Agency decided not to proceed with the shared path works around Mangamanu at this, at this time. But in case um, that proposal was developed in the future, an ongoing monitoring program was set up, um, comprised of topographic surveys. We also had two, a two camera monitoring system put in place to observe the surf break. And we collected a year of imagery at, on the first 20 minutes of every hour at one frame per second. Control points were collected at the time, allowing all of the imagery to be rectified. And then we can undertake some analysis on that imagery. For example, we can analyze the breaking fraction at each image, to do, and then we can start to combine those. The bottom left plot is the breaking fraction at each image. The bottom right plot is the cumulative breaking portion 
over that time. So we can see where breaking is occurring most of the time and where it is occasionally occurring. This, this gives us much more control in defining the outer edge of the, of the uh, surf zone than an average averaging approach. We can define things like the 10% exceedance position, where 10% of the time we've got breaking occurring outside this line and 90% inside it. We had some of the local surfers using GPS surf watches to log their rides. This is the blue shown in the blue dots. The um, color map there is the um, breaking exceedance and the red line is the 10% breaking exceedance. So we can see really good agreement between the GPS ride lines and the 10% exceedance, which makes sense since surfers are usually surfing the largest few waves um, of each set. We could also rerun some swash simulations for those exact same conditions. Um, and we can look at the breaking positions, that's the top plot of those waveforms as they come in. And we can again overlay those with the 10% breaking line and the GPS ride lines with the color plot now being the swash breaking footprints, um, which all line up really well. And, and that gives us confidence that the swash model was reproducing those footprints well. Um, and also that this um, year data set can do quite a good job at defining um, those ride lines. So that's a really good um, baseline data set to have if this proposal ever gets brought forward again in the future and needs to be reassessed. So in summary, um, the November 26th earthquake had a significant effect on the natural surf break at Mangamanu a framework for undertaking a robust evidence-based uh, evidence effects and risk assessment for surf breaks was developed and utilised to assess effects of the proposed works. Underpinning this approach is that local community and users are actively engaged throughout the process. For Mangamanu, the re results of this effects assessment was a decision not to progress the shared path, but ongoing monitoring was undertaken and a year of image data has been collected to provide a baseline preliminary analysis so shows so close agreement between the 10% wave breaking fraction, GPS surf watches showing the ride lines and the swash model outputs. Um, acknowledgements to the NZ Transport Agency and Kiwi Rail via the Nectar Alliance for, for undertaking and let us under, letting us undertake this project, to local surfers for their input and discussion on the existing surf break and to engineers at Tonkin and Taylor, MHL and Met Ocean Solutions for their, um, for their inputs. Thank you very much and I'm happy to take questions.